Hey there, it's Brittany and I'm back with a tutorial, which I have hesitated to even call it that because I'm just going to be doing a strung necklace. Um, so I was trying to design an earring kit and then I backed away and I was like, wait, I love these beads as a necklace for myself. <laughs> so um, I was using these um, Hishi, turquoise magnesite Hishi beads um, or rondelles, whatever. And I had these um, and they're much more turquoise than they're looking in the camera. Um, these red, orange, like Celtic cross beads. And I was like, oh, those would be a fantastic necklace together. So, so much for me making bead kits with these because they're going to be a necklace for me. <laughs> so I went through my stash and I pulled out some other things. I'm going to show you some of the things I pulled out. So I found another strand of these, but now that I'm looking at them up close, um, this half and this half of this strand are different sizes. So as you can see, it kind of gets a little bit bigger and I didn't notice that, which is fine. I just won't use that half. I want to make sure that we stick with um, beads that are similarly sized. Um, I'm going to have a little bit more of these, but I'm going to use those. And then I was kind of like thinking, do I want a pendant? Do I want a focal? And I'm not going to do a pendant. I just want this to be um, a strung necklace, but I am going to do a focal. So I have a new bead mat somewhere. Where is it? There it is. We'll use a, we'll use this bead mat today. So let me pick up these beads. And I'll back out a little bit. Oh my goodness, I already have dirt on it. I've only used it twice. <laughs> so let me back out a little bit so we can see the bead mat. There we go. There we go. So what I'm thinking, this is the one that, this is the consistent sized one. Um, I really wanted the focus to be on this strand because these are pretty large and they're pretty stunning. But I think I'm gonna slip in maybe six of these throughout the necklace. Because you know I love red and turquoise, which until I got out some red beads, didn't realize these aren't really red. They're like red orange. So then I got out a bunch of different magnesite beads that I wanted to kind of match to them to see what mat oh, so what worked, and also a, a strand of dyed agate, um, which these actually work pretty well, but I think they're just a little too red. Um, the ones that I found were closest were these. This is actually an orange strand outside of. I mean, you can tell it's a little bit more orange than those beads, but the it just brings out the orange in the crosses. So I think either that strand, if I t if I use any of the beads, or um, this strand, which is also a magnesite strand, and I don't maybe got it in Tucson, I don't remember. So I'm gonna put these off to the side because those don't match. And then I was thinking, you know, this would look great with some silver. So um, I went to, I had a haul last year where I got just an amazing deal on some really old, old, old silver beads. And I busted out a bunch of them for this project because um, I haven't really used them. I used them in maybe one necklace and that was it. So I found these, they're like silver barrels, very old. And I'm thinking I can use two in this necklace and I'm gonna save two and I might make a bracelet too because I think this needs a matching bracelet. Um, I have a bunch of these which are really, really awesome. And I think that'll be the focal down here. And then um, I got this out maybe as a focal for a bracelet. And then um, these two beads as well. I only had two, so I'm thinking I'll use these a little bit closer to the pendant, or the not the pendant, to the focal bead because I think they're really cool. I like these two, but I like these better. So um, the only other thing I got out is I, I'm not sure how I'm going to finish this at the end. I haven't found a clasp yet in my stash that I really like, so I'm not sure what we'll use. Um, I also have some bead caps. Um, these are from Chelsea's Beads. And then I also have some chain, which I don't know that I want to use chain on this, but in case I run out of beads, and so it's like matte silver, dark silver. And then um, some other bead caps that I got from Donna in a friend mail package, I think at the beginning of this year. So those might be used in the back. So I think they're the perfect color to use. So 
let's get started. Um, I'm gonna find some bead stringing wire. Okay, I'm gonna use some Beadalon um, 49 strand bead stringing wire, silver. And for now, I'm gonna strand onto the spool. Um, I tend to use less wire that way, but what I wanna do is, I wanna kinda design this before we even start doing that. So I, I know I'm gonna use at least all of one strand of these, but I might use part of both. came off very easily that's surprising <laughs> and then um, I don't really want to use any kind of spacer between the red and the blue or the red and the turquoise but I do need to figure out how and where I'm going to place my my other beads um, and I was thinking if we used these bead caps they would be around these a little bit so we'll see Maybe I'll use two in the back or, or some in the back, maybe a chain of them going up the back, I don't know. Um, I also need to decide on how f how many spacers I'm gonna use, or, or he-she beads, or rondelles, whatever you wanna call them, between each of our vocal beads. I'm going to start where it's easiest, in the middle. Move this back a little bit for you. There we go. And uh, I'm just gonna separate this, I, I don't, really know where the midpoint is but I'm just going to kind of take some out and we can just move those later okay so we'll put that guy in the middle and then I'm gonna do what feels what feels good I guess and see how far out I want maybe five I think five's a good number and uh, we'll kind of just go from there these are just gonna fall anyway, so I'm just gonna push them. So then we'll put this guy here. And if I don't like how it looks, then we'll move on to a, you know, a different number. And then, oh, we still have another one. I don't think I'll probably even need to, um, now that I'm looking at this, I'm gonna pull it down a little bit. I don't even think I'll need to add anything like this or chain or anything in the back, just from how far I think we're already going with just one strand. So I'm gonna do another five. It's gonna kind of go off of screen here. And then I'm gonna put in our last, oh no, that guy goes on this side. So, um, at this point, I think, hmm, I think I'll put in either, uh, the 10 millimeter would probably fit better, but the color for the four millimeter looks, or I'm sorry, the eight millimeter looks best. I'm just kind of seeing how this would look. Let's just cut it open. And I don't have to use these as bead caps. I could just put these up the back actually I kind of like yeah we're gonna do that we're gonna use I'm not gonna use the orange or the red I'm gonna probably end up using that one of them in a bracelet really quickly after this but what I'm gonna do up the back is I am going to put several of these together to look like silver beads in the back all right so I'm gonna show you what that'll look like starting this is a little crimped um, that actually doesn't leave room for us to finish the necklace with these but I think that's okay I think that's okay so we'll save those for another project what I'll do here is start loading these on 
And once they're tightened, um, they're not gonna slip against each other like that. I just wanna make sure this looks good. Yeah, it'll be fine. So once those are tightened, uh, when I crimp, it'll look fine. I'm gonna put four sets on to start and then I can always leave that part open in the back so I can add more if I need to. And then I'll just start stringing the rest of this onto our necklace strand. I'm using a heavier or more strand um, beading wire because the necklace is gonna be heavier. If you don't have 49 strand, that's fine. I would probably try using two strands of like 19 strand or something with this. Um, I typically don't make heavy, heavy beaded necklaces, but this one's out of my this one was begging to be made and it's not typically what I do. So I'm gonna speed this up. So I don't know if you saw me fighting in the fast forward with this bead right here, but these hollow beads can be a real pain to get your um, wire to go through. I, I tried for a while and then I had to um, kind of employ my own tool. I made um, a little needle, I used some 24 gauge wire, I folded it in half, um, I stuck in my my bead stringing wire and I kind of just finagled it until I could get both ends through the hole. I mean it took a minute or two but it was taking way too long trying to do it using the bead stringing wire because the bead stringing wire isn't stiff enough. So with this I can kind of move it around in there until I can find the opening but it's kind of like this happens with um, like guru beads, it happens with boho beads, anything that's got a hollow inside it can be kind of a pain to um, string so you just kind of just have to take your time until uh, you can get it to to line up exactly and I can kind of, there's almost like a lip on this one which is is what I'm running into a problem with here so I'm, I'm trying to see I mean it's not very bright inside the bead but I'm trying to see inside the bead so I can find you know kind of guide the wire that just made it like worse so I'll just kind of take my time and I just kind of move it around from side to side there we go and then we'll just pull it through and now my my bead is through. I didn't want to get up to find a needle and this worked. This was just some scrap wire I had laying around. So I'll just keep going. Okay, so I tried it um, around my neck and it turned out to be the exact length I wanted it. I don't know how things like like that line up, but I'm very, very happy with it. Um, of course, I'll show you everything um, uh, on a really pretty background later, but I just want to show you what those will look like. And I just think it's fun. I think it's fun. Um, so I went back through my stash and looked at some more clasps and Donna also sent me these and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, isn't that awesome? This goes really perfectly with it. Wow, this is, oh wait, I think we're gonna go with this one. Oh goodness, I'm, I'm torn. I think, I think we're gonna go with this box clasp. So I just have to figure out how it works. Or maybe it's not a clasp. Oh, is it a, it's a magnetic clasp and it's sterling. Okay. I think I'm not gonna go with them because I'm worried that this might be too heavy for this. Even though it doesn't seem like it'll come apart because it's it, you have to pull it up and out. I, this, I don't wanna put too much pressure on this. So we're gonna go with this guy. It's perfect, it works really well and I'll save that for um, another project, maybe a bracelet. Maybe the bracelet to go with this. So we'll keep it to the side just in case. Just in case. So I'll put these back together. 
and we'll go ahead and get our necklace put together this one has a um a jump ring on it but i'm gonna take that off because i don't need it And I'm going to scooch in a little bit because you don't need to see the whole necklace. I want you to see a little bit closer up now. There we go. Bring this in a little bit. Okay. And uh, I'm going to clasp right onto there. However, I do want to cut off the part that was in the needle. I just don't want any weakness from my bead stringing wire. And um, I'll go ahead and do one side and then the other. Um, this necklace is is symmetrical so I don't need to worry about which side you know I'm putting the the clasp on or anything like that um, now that I'm thinking about it I think I need one little bead here to kind of transition into the clasp although what will end up happening is the crimp bead will sit inside of there so we we'll just do it like that we'll just crimp right onto there we don't need them we don't need we don't need it um i do have some uh wire guards which i typically never use but i feel like it would be super helpful with this necklace so we're gonna try them out <laughs> if it doesn't work it doesn't work we could take them off um so i just need two and i'm gonna find oh here's my jump ring or ju not jump ring uh crimp bead couple crimp beads and so first I am going to slide that back on I'm gonna put on my crimp then my wire guard And actually, before we do that, there we go. And then we'll come down. Be helpful if you don't kink your wire while you're doing this. You can tell I don't use these very often. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. And then we'll come back through our other side of our wire guard. Hopefully the other side will be a lot more quick go a lot more quickly than this. And I'm still kinking my wire. There we go. There we go. She can do it. <laughs> We'll slip that around our clasp and then we're going to come back down. See, I told you that crimp bead's going to get stuck in that bead down there. We'll come back down through our crimp. Okay. And then I'm going to come down through, I'm going to come, I think I'm going to try and come all the way down here because it's going to be a little strange if I, uh, try and come out of one of these bead caps so there we go get this through a couple of these and we'll be good okay so here we go and then I'll be I'll be working on you know making this tighter when we get to the other side we're not really worrying about tight tightening at this point we're just worrying about crimping at this point so I'm gonna find my crimping pliers okay and I'm gonna go ahead and crimp don't worry if there are gaps that's not where we're fixing this that we're fixing that on the other side of the necklace when we close the, the second side so I'll go ahead and get that little crimp bead right in our largest valley and I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, please tell me this is an okay crimp. There we go. And then we'll turn, make sure your wires aren't crossed. Uh, wire guards help with not crossing the wires. Go ahead and crimp again. 
and we're just gonna sorry it's out of the camera <laughs> and then uh, we're just gonna kind of go up and make sure that they're together there we go and I like how that slides right into our bead cap so I'm gonna finish this on the other side okay we're just gonna move we, and of course we want it to stay loosey-goosey so we don't crimp in a straight line that's not gonna help anybody we want to make sure now that we're very careful that these beads stay together because if, if there are any gaps it's gonna Nobody's going to see it in the back of my necklace, but I know it's going to be there and it'll drive me nuts for the rest of my life. <laughs> so I just want to make sure it is the way I want it to be when I'm tightening. So here we go. We're moving things down. Get this wire out of the way. I can cut that after we're finished with the other side. I'm just making sure everything's laying the way I like. We don't have any gaps where I don't oh, see I'm creating gaps where there don't need to be any gaps. I'm gonna cut my wire. Whoops, wrong. Okay. I'm just checking between my beads that there aren't any noticeable issues. Okay, I'm gonna put on my crimp. Then my guard. And then I think we're okay to do this and then put on the the clasp because we're not crimped yet. I'm not back through the crimp bead yet, but just want to make sure that, that there aren't any issues getting that into the track. There we go. And then I'll slide my... You can always use a jump ring here too if you're not comfortable getting this right onto your clasp. Try and fit that in there. There we go. And then I'm going to bring this down through my crimp and through as many as oops as many of these beads as I can get let's see if I can get my crimp to come out of there there we go Okay, so I am going to try and get this tightened with as few gaps as possible. There might be one between these beads and we'll figure that out. So because I'm tightening this, those have all straightened up. And we're doing well on the other side. I just want to make sure, again, that we're loosey-goosey, but also no gaps. I don't know how many times I can probably say the same thing but it's important we don't want to go through um, the whole experience of crimping and everything and then it's just it's not laying correctly because it's too loose or too tight okay I think we're good now I just have to find my crimp bead he fell in there Okay, sorry, I had to end up flat crimping that because that crimp bead kept um, going inside of my bead cap and I couldn't I couldn't get a, a handle on them. So it ended up being a little looser than I'm, I was hoping for. Um, so I'm gonna, this is probably where I would crack off a crimp and then redo it. Um, but you could also push in a, um, a bead a crimp bead cover which let's see what if I can do that and see if we can get some of that space back if not it's 
it's not a big deal it's the back of the necklace but like I said it's gonna kind of irk me a little bit going forward see that I don't like that <laughs> So let me cut off our wires. We'll finagle a little bit and see if there's anything we can do. Otherwise, you know what? I'm not going to crack off that wire yet. I mean, I might have to crack off the bead cap or the, the crimp bead. So let me get in there as close as you can get without cutting your other wire. There we go. All right, I'm gonna see what it looks like with the bead cover on the other side too, because I'm just not liking how those are moving around. And uh, I might just change it. I might just change it to where we add some, some of the orange beads, and that kind of could be like a learning opportunity for some people, <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, I'm just, I, I'm not liking how they're spinning around. I really, really wanted them, I don't, and I don't have beads that look like this. I really, really wanted them to just kind of stay together. Well, this one's staying together now. Actually, adding, it looked like adding the crimp covers worked. So, uh, crisis averted, but I was really, really close to taking off both crimps and just adding some orange beads with the cr the, the uh, bead caps in the back. But no, crisis averted, the, the covers worked all right I'll go ahead and get in there as closely as possible don't cut the main wire I feel like my uh, brother who when he um, does electrical work and doesn't turn doesn't turn off the electricity to the house don't touch it's what he says <laughs> when he's looking at the wire he goes in don't touch it that's how he gets it done. Oh, I got it too far out. All right, let's see if we can get it into that other hole. Actually, if I can see if I can get in there a little bit further. Don't cut it. There we go. All right. So an easy, easy, easy necklace that came together really quickly, but then the end was a little frustrating. But we made it through. We made it through. Look how beautiful that is. Isn't that gorgeous? That that beautiful, um, pe uh, not pendant, that beautiful clasp that Donna gave me. Okay, so I'm gonna take some really pretty pictures of this at the end. But there's our necklace, and uh, let's make a bracelet real quick. Oh, my back hurts from bending over. So I have some extra blue and some silver beads. I'm gonna take this out of the frame. I think, let me take a look, I might use, I might make a couple bracelets, I'm not sure, I might have to get up and get some matching magnesite, I don't know if I have any magnesite this color, because it's a very, like, it's like a green teal magnesite instead of um, blue, like we normally see, like the more turquoise color, um, so I definitely want a bracelet where this is in the middle, and... So funny because some of these beads are red and some of them are blue <laughs> some of these beads are red and some are orange so like this one's more red but this one's more orange so I guess I could do a mix but this one is closer I don't know all right well let me cut these open let's see what's going on Um, I got these at a live sale on Bead in the Beauty in the Bead Shop, and like I said, I don't know where the larger ones came from. Probably Tucson or some haul somewhere from eBay. <laughs> and um, I just want to see. I'm not gonna. I don't think I'm gonna use wire. I think I'm going to use elastic cord. But I just want to see how the eight millimeter 
looks with our bead caps. Okay, it's a little bit more hidden. Let's see what the 10 millimeter looks like. both but I think I like the red better so I'll move the orange out of the screen okay and I don't think I had oh I did have 10 millimeter orange oh now that makes it harder um Actually, I think we're going to go with the 10 millimeter orange now that I'm looking at it because it's a little shinier and uh, this strand has some, some variation in the oranges to make it a little bit more red. Glad I double checked. Always take some time to double, double check. Okay. So we'll use several of these. We're going to use some of these. This guy. Um, I might make, do I want to make a stack? I don't know, maybe we'll use one of those in a bracelet and with a couple of these maybe. All right, I'm going to check to see if I have any matching in some rounds and I'll be right back. Okay, so I didn't find any rounds, but I did see that my turquoise drawer is collapsing because it's too heavy. <laughs> so it took me a, mi a minute to kind of get through that situation. Um, so it, that makes it easier and harder because we'll, we just know we're going to use these, but um, and just have to design around them. I did find these though, which I haven't used yet, and I don't know if I showed you guys. I don't think I did show you guys these. <sighs> They're gorgeous. I sold them per piece in my last sale, um, but I kept a strand for myself. Uh, there's no way I could part with all of them. They're how light. So I might make, um, might just do one with those like a it's it would be an alternate to wearing whatever bracelet that we make right now but um let me find some elastic cord okay i tend not to use this elastic cord too much it's from amazon it has such a great delivery system but um it's annoying it's just too thick and it says it's 0.8 millimeter but it's not like it's just it's too thick to be 0.8 millimeter and um it's too tough, but it's the only stuff that I think will hold up to all of these, the heaviness of these beads. So this one I want to be in the center of these, and I might just do all of the rondelles on this one without any red and make this the focal. I think that's what I'm going to do. And then I'll make a, a, a red one, red and orange one. So I have to find a bead that I can hide the hole, or the, not the hole, the, find a hole that's big enough to hide our knot. And this is probably going to be pushing it. Um, it's a little, it's a little small for a bead this big, but um, the, the first problem, the first hur hurdle that we're going to have to hit with this one is getting it through a hollow bead. It's always fun until you can't get the elastic cord through. I'm going to try that needle that I made. We'll see if it works. Ah, that worked perfectly. Let's see if we can get it through there. Yes, we can. Then we'll just take it right off and uh, we'll make sure to cut out this part where actually I'm going to do it right now because I don't want to lose it. And then I'm just going to string on a ton of these tissues.
Okay, I didn't realize I filmed most of that in slow-mo <laughs> instead of speed up. So sorry about that. Um, okay, so this looks really big and it is big, but these beads are huge. And if I didn't use more beads and make it very long, then it would just, there would be a gap on my wrist and I probably wouldn't end up wearing my bracelet. So um, you're gonna need to, if you're not fitting it to your wrist, and let's say you're making what you would like to be a seven inch bracelet, you're gonna need to use more beads than you normally would. Uh, because the beads are larger, they're taking up some circumference inside of the bracelet, on the inside of the bracelet. So I'm stretching. We always want to pre-stretch our stretch cord because it will stretch out and you'll have to restring your bracelet very quickly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a knot. So this bracelet's definitely about the turquoise beads. They're, I just really wanted those on display with one very vintage bead in the middle. I'm just going to do it three times and grab your choice of glue. I would recommend um, GS Hypo Cement. That's what I always use. Um, there's super glue, new glue. There's E6000, but I don't really like those for bracelets. Um, of course, my glue is such a hot mess, always is. And I'm just going to get, oh, see, that's not tight. Hmm, I guess it's as tight as it's going to get. It's, it's this... Um, Yeah, I knew it wasn't tight enough. Okay, so we're just gonna do it again. Okay, that's better, I think. Yeah, I don't know why I'm having issues with this. It might be because of the size of the beads. I'm not 100% sure. It could be the string, but I think I'm not tying it tight enough. Okay, I think that knot was different. Of course, we've got glue seeping all over the place. Get some glue in there, get it on both sides of the knot, and then we'll tug again. Set that aside for five minutes. We'll close our glue because otherwise we'll have a huge mess. And then um, I'm gonna design a second bracelet in case I don't wanna wear something this chunky, which is it is chunky and it's enormous. Um, I'm gonna design one with uh, one of the crosses. Um, Maybe a couple of these, not a lot. So like four. And then my silver beads. And then we're gonna use some, maybe I'll grab four more of these. Cause then we start getting in the chunkier size. Um, two on this side, two on this side. Uh, actually we might move that back a little bit. So. Maybe we'll do one of our orange beads. There we go. With our bead caps. I don't know if we need a bead cap next to our barrel, so I'm just gonna do it on the side of our turquoise beads. If you want it to be both sides, totally okay with me. And then I'm gonna do another orange bead here, orange red, I should say. I'm gonna back out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Then I'm gonna string this um, and see, I'm gonna string it on a different type of bead uh, elastic cord. It's gonna be 0.8 millimeter and see how I like it so far. And then I'll kind of go from there. I think I put my beads in my glue. 
go here. Okay, so here's how where we're at so far with our bracelet, which I stink and love. It's so <laughs> pretty. Um, I'm gonna test it on my wrist and then see where we need to go. Oh, I put this one on wrong. There we go. Okay, I actually only need like two of my rondelles and I think we'll be golden in the back. So let's try that. Yep. Yep, that'll be perfect. So I'm going to cut my uh, elastic cord. And I want to make sure the uh, part that I used in the needle doesn't make it into my bracelet. It's right there. Okay, and then we'll cut the other end. Okay, and stretch. If you're not comfortable using stretch material you could just wire use a bead stringing wire for this I'm really stretching this because this is way stretchier than that other cord that I was using okay and I'll just do my three knots again One. And that knot will fit right inside that bead cap, so I don't have to worry about it. Let's make sure we get not, uh, glue on both sides of the knot. Hopefully not your beads like I do. And we'll put that aside for a second for it to dry. And I'll trim the other one we have finished. Try and slide that knot inside this bigger bead. Don't think it, we're going to have too much of a problem, but it might give us a little bit of a headache at first because it's so thick. Try not to pull too hard. There we go. So there's our first bracelet. It is gorgeous. Try it on. Oh, and it's perfect. It's, it actually could be a little bit smaller, but it's okay. It, it doesn't, it's not cutting off my circulation. And um, if I ever want to, I can always restring it, but it's just a really pretty statement piece. And somebody will grab your wrist and be like, hey, where'd you get that? Um, I made it. So we'll go ahead and trim this. Um, you could make matching earrings, but I don't wear them and I'm not giving away this set. So I'm not gonna worry about earrings in this video. And then I'm just gonna try and slide this hole into, or I'm sorry, the, the I don't know why I keep saying hole, um, the knot into that bead. There we go. Isn't that gorgeous? I love it. And same thing here, it's perfect. So where it is, they look good together too. So I will show you some glamour shots on a different background but I hope you learned something today <laughs> we actually did more than I thought I would um, but I really 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 love both of these pieces um, I'm not gonna make anything right now with this because I know I, I barely will wear these two bracelets together um, so I know I'm not gonna wear a third that's really chunky if I am being honest I'll probably wear this one with the necklace and this one with another piece but I can always switch it up if I really want to so Thanks so much for watching. Um, if you're interested in jewelry or beads, please like and subscribe and um, share if you can. Uh, stay tuned for Goldie. She's super cute. Bye-bye.
morning.